Welcome to Canucks After Dark. Here are your hosts, Parker Hallowell and Clay Emo. Good evening, Vancouver Canucks After Dark. Maybe the first time coming to you after a Vancouver Canucks victory, <laughs> albeit preseason, albeit at the Abbotsford Center, but it's still a win. It's still something for us to have some fun with tonight. We hope you are all doing very well. We are glad hockey season is back. It has been a long wait. It has been months of suffering and waiting, and we still are suffering and waiting for some things. Um, but we have Canucks hockey and they played pretty well tonight. There's a lot of players who played pretty well tonight and we have a ton to talk about as always joined by my co-host Canuck clay. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. We have so much to talk about. Do these people even know that we met? We'll talk about that in a second. I'm sure. sure. And I just want, you know, Parker, that I've moved back a little bit because, the, <laughs> you know, so excited after last week's show, we knew that the Canucks momentum our show the Canucks themselves and the very first comment I see is man Clay Emo has got a or Canuck Clay's got a big head <laughs> and, and I didn't know that was literal or figurative so I've I've stepped back about six inches I don't know now we're at least equal size sort of that's great of. <laughs> uh like Clay mentioned we do have a lot to talk about uh some of the topics we're going to hit on uh training camp because basically all of training camp happened since our last show uh two Canucks games to talk about two preseason games uh, we've got a bunch of battles that we've seen. The Rathbone versus Uolevi battle. The Highmore lockwood McEwen battle. Uh, the Alex Shiasan PTO. Uh, a ton, a ton of stuff for us to hit on tonight. Of course, we're going to try to get to some of your questions later on in the show as well. If we have time, we're going to try to make time. We'll make it work. And I Play think we're de debuting a new segment too. And later, we right? are debuting okay. a new segment, okay. which awesome. we will get to at some point as well. Do we want to start with tonight's win or do we want to start at the beginning? Uh, I'm fine going with the win because it's fresh. We can go backwards. I think our, our viewers are smart enough to figure out what's going on, right? What Let's do, do it. Let's talk about this Canucks win 4-2 over the Calgary Flames at the Abbotsford Center. A not sold out crowd at the $80 ticket Abbotsford Center. Um, message sent, I'm sure, to the Canucks ownership there. But... Uh, a fun game, and we got to see some new faces in the lineup. We got to see Connor Garland, Oliver Ekman Larson, Vasily Pod Colson, and others. And uh, who stood out to you tonight? Who was, if you had to pick a player of the game, who was yeah. it? Truly, uh, the, the two former Coyotes are the guys who stood out to me. And I would say uh, Ekman Larson, even a tiny bit more than Garland. Not just because he got the two assists, not because he almost scored that empty netter and made it a three point night, but he he's smart. Every time he got the puck, at least to me, I, I granted it's preseason and Calgary's lineup was about as strong as ours was yesterday in Spokane. But uh, Ekman Larson doesn't freak out when he gets the puck. He doesn't panic. He has a hard, deceivingly hard shot that gets to the net. I was, maybe it's because the bar is quite low, Parker, and I, mm -hmm. maybe because I want so badly for him to do well. But I thought he was great tonight. I really did. I agree. I, I was looking to, I was ready to be let down. Um, and he, <laughs> he outperformed my expectations. Again, it's one preseason game. I'm not going to be like, all right, OEL is great. The Canucks win the trade. It's all good, right? It was one game and it was a game where he played really well. Uh, he skated pretty well. Like he looked pretty yeah. fluid. Uh, he looked really smart. There was just the little, you know, going in on the three on two, crossing over, drop pass to Pearson, just drawing the defender over, giving Pearson some space, just simple things that work really well. And uh, yeah, he looked really impressive tonight. And speaking of the Arizona connection, Louis Erickson had a beautiful goal tonight for the Arizona Coyotes. I have not seen it, but I've, I've, it's all over my Twitter timeline. Did you see it, Parker? I did. It was just a no, good wrist it. shot. It was just okay. basically he got the puck in the, in the face-off circle and just ripped a wrist shot, like the hardest shot we've seen in the last <laughs> six years uh, for, for was Louis it, was Erickson. It, was it Klimovich violent, though? Uh, no, it didn't have okay. that much heat yeah. to it, but it was still a well-placed <laughs> shot. Very good, very good. So yes, uh, Ekman Larson is my guy. I'm sure he was your guy too. Who else would you say stood out to you? Well, one thing that I was watching, of course, was that Garland, Miller, and Pod Coles in line. Now we went yep. to, uh, we'll, we'll touch on this a little bit uh, later, but we both went to that training camp session on Saturday morning. Uh, and we both noticed that the sort of Garland, Miller, Pod Coles in unit was pretty quiet uh, on yeah. during that session. Uh, they weren't standing out. They just were sort of out on the ice every once in a while. And you didn't really notice them. But tonight, at least in the first period, they played really well. Uh, they looked like they were gelling together. A couple of really good chances for Pod Colson. 
um, and sort of hopefully a good sign of the future. Yes, um, I, I did like Garland. The way he, he's just kind of elusive, right? The way it reminds me of PD a little bit in the way that he can dangle, protect the puck. He's not the biggest guy, obviously. And uh, he always makes something happen. So, yes, I agree with you, Parker. He was way more effective tonight than we saw him on Saturday. But honestly, there are no veterans that stood up to us on Saturday. I know we're going to get to that mm -hmm. later. But uh, no, it was nice to see him. I thought Bo had a strong game as well, but he always does. And Di Pietro, I wasn't sure when he let in those uh, two in the second period. But he fought, he fought, and battled, and he was fine in the third period. Especially when the net was empty. He made a couple of really <laughs> yeah. excellent sprawling saves. Uh, another name I want to get to here, Tucker Pullman. First time seeing him. In which a Vic, Canucks uniform, Vic? I didn't think much. <laughs> it looked he was fine. I, I think yeah. he sort of came as advertised. He he wasn't really noticeable out there. Which for a defenseman, for a sort of more shut down type defenseman, yeah. right? Someone focused more on defense. That's what you want, right? You want to yeah. not really notice them, which isn't the best vote of confidence. But he wasn't out there making mistakes. He looked fine. There's one play he made. Maybe it was on a power play, though, Parker. You have to refresh my memory. Where he did, he snuck down the right side deked a guy and and did try to centering pass i think that went through a couple mm -hmm. of skates but yeah overall I, I agree with your assessment is we don't notice him in a bad way and maybe with ekman larson you're always going to notice ekman larson more I, yeah i think pullman even defers to ekman larson on that on that pairing so yeah i, I think they're fine i thought they're fine on saturday and i thought they were fine tonight i agree and then we're going to talk more about him later but i do want to at least touch on here uh chieson's game uh yes. he was out there on a pretty top line, you know, a good, uh, a good assignment for him with Tanner Pearson and Bo Horvat. Uh, and I thought he played really well. Yeah. You, maybe you're a bit higher on Chase than I am. I, I thought he was fine. I, um, he, he was the, he was the bump. No, he was the net front on the power play, right? Horvat was in the bumper and yeah. he was in the net front. Yeah. I thought he was okay. Maybe, um, I don't know if he's done enough to me, mm -hmm. maybe earn a spot. Hey, how can you be on a PTO and play preseason games? I guess that's okay. I think that counts. Yeah, you're fine. I, I, I thought you're, you're just not until the regular not. season. Yeah, okay. you're good. Okay. Um, okay. And that is something that we'll we'll talk about later because that could, if he does get signed, and let's say they want to put him in a similar role to that, that does throw some wrinkles in the lineup that we'll yeah. get to as well. Uh, anyone else that you wanted to to talk about from this game tonight? Uh, I, I Rathbone maybe not as flashy as yesterday, but I still think he had a solid game. I really did, yep. and. You know, I, you got, you guys know, I don't hate your levy. I don't rag on your levy, but we're going to be talking about roster battles. And I think it's very clear to both of us who's, who's got the upper hand right now. <laughs> yeah. I thought you levy played okay tonight. Uh, yeah. he looked, he looked a lot better than last night. Uh, he yeah. made a couple good defensive plays. Um, but it, it, it's still, I think is Rathbone for me. And again, we'll get yep. more to that later. Um, for sure. All right, we'll quickly touch on last night's game as well. Kraken taking down the Canucks 5-3. to three. The squid emoji was the best I could do here. Um, <laughs> and uh, there was a game where the Canucks came out really strong. Um, but at the end of the day, look, it was the Kraken sort of top nine and their real goalies against basically a 50% AHL squad with Arter's Silovs putting on an absolute show. <laughs> yeah. Um, any, any thoughts that, that stood out for you from this game? Yeah, well, Rathbone was the one who stood out to me yesterday with yeah. his... He had a goal and assist, right? And I think uh, on the... More so, Parker, than that partial breakaway that he scored on to open the scoring, I was more impressed with him on that power play where he held the line. He made three or four great passes to Miller on... No, excuse me, Besser on the left. One or two to Nick Patan on the right. But really, I, it's one game, but I would dare say his passing was more accurate than, say, I've seen Quinn Hughes do. Sometimes Quinn Hughes, you want him to get it to Petey, and he puts it in his feet all the time. I think Petey gets, bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, Petey gets uh, frustrated as well. But overall, I thought Rathbone was great. And I guess my other takeaway, two really quick takeaways, I was really happy for the Seattle fan base, honestly. I'm not just mm -hmm. saying that because we lost. It was good. It was a great show. They were, they were really into it. But context is key. We can't get too high tonight because look who we beat. We yep. beat one line, basically, of players. And then they could say the same about us yesterday. So uh, context is key, especially when it's the first two games of the preseason. Absolutely. The real stuff starts on October 13th. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention uh, from the last game. Um, what did you think? We got to see Brock Besser on the power play just unloading shots yesterday. <laughs> and he looked, his shot looked really good. Uh, he did end up scoring yeah. on one that got sort of deflected weirdly. Yeah. Um, and we got to see Brad Hunt in the lineup yesterday as well. Uh, sort of yeah. also in that mix for that third uh, lefty side. Do you think he made a good case for himself yesterday? 
Yeah, I think Hunt's in the middle of that three horse race, uh, maybe closer to Rathbone than he is to Yolevi, but uh, he's fine. I know a lot of people like him, and I, he's always found a way to stick on to NHL rosters. And, and about Besser, you know what I'm going to find interesting, Parker, is I think Besser and Garland are competing. Maybe they're not competing. Maybe Travis Green already knows. They're both right shot guys. We saw Garland play over there tonight, right? So who's going to be um, who's going to be on the first power play unit? And that's pretty good consolation prize for that second power play unit. Yeah, it's probably going to have like Pearson and Pod Colson, right? I yeah. was going to say if you're if you're putting Connor Garland on your second power play, that just means that's just good, right? That means <laughs> yeah. you have real threats out there for the whole two minutes. Um, which we haven't really seen for the Canucks lately, right? Like last year, the first power play would go out for a minute 15 and then do nothing. <laughs> they'd stand around the whole time and just pass the buck back and forth. Then power play two would come out and they'd be really active, but nothing would ever get to the net either. Uh, yes. so, so maybe uh, a rejuvenated power play. Again, the power play coach, Newell Brown, is gone. So we get, we'll get a new look at the power play this year and hopefully it'll have a little bit more firepower to it as well. But- that's a really good point about the second power play unit because I was always not even joke around say they were very direct, right? It was Vertanen, it was Pearson, it was Hoglander. They would make sure they got over the line. None of this fancy, fancy drop passes. They would just get there. And then, yeah, straight to the net. And you're right, not always the most effective, but it seemed like they were working hard at least. <laughs> yeah, they were always moving their feet. Uh, and hopefully, you know, they can be a little bit more. I liked the energy uh, and it always yeah. brought uh, something else, but it never, it never really panned out uh anything else from last night's game that you wanted oh, to talk about it was so long ago man uh, uh, <laughs> yeah no uh, i yeah go ahead i was gonna say i thought their i thought their broadcast was pretty good uh the mm. root sports uh seattle yep. broadcast uh i mean they have a you know veteran and john forsland on the call uh, i thought jt brown did pretty well i liked yeah. their whole in-game presentation they were they were definitely trying to explain the game to new yes. viewers a lot which lots of people didn't like online but you know it's a new fan base ha- probably a third of the people have haven't watched hockey or much hockey before so uh totally fair uh and i thought you know seattle's gonna have at least a good media product uh to pay attention yeah. to of those two guys parker who's the play-by-play and who's the color you know? Uh, Forslund's the play-by-play and then okay. JT Brown is the, is the color. Okay. One guy, uh, I thought the play-by-play guy was really good. I yeah. thought the color was okay. I think he called him Sivos a few times. Yeah. There, well, I, I think Silov's name has been backwards all the time. Uh, okay. JT okay. Brown hasn't done it before cause he was just playing last year. Oh, uh, and then okay. Forslund is the guy from ESPN like right. 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. By the way, over 100 people watching right now, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you guys for joining. As the yeah. season ramps up, you know, we're glad to have you guys here. And hit the like button if you're here. And if you do miss any parts of the show, you can find the podcast and you can just rewind back to the beginning on YouTube because it is magic. Um, <laughs> anything else we want to hit from last night or are we ready to move on? No, just a good, um, happy, truly. Uh, it sounds like, it looks like Seattle's off to a good start. They're not even playing in their real arena yet. They're, they're kind of doing the Washington State tour for their preseason games. But yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think they'll be fine um, when it comes to fan engagement and and buy in for sure. Absolutely. All right. Next, we're going to uh, we're going to touch on training camp, and then after that, we'll go into some of the roster battles, which I'm sure is why a lot of you guys are here. Uh, training camp Saturday. Both of us headed out to the Abbotsford Center. We sat there. We watched three and a half hours of of <laughs> on ice sessions. Um, and this is where I fell in love with Will Lockwood. Uh, I fell in love with Jack Rathbone. Um, they were the absolute standouts for me, especially Lockwood uh, in that Saturday session. Yeah, and even before we get to the players, um, because I think we brought it up here in one of the shows, uh, why don't you tell people what the very first thing we did when you when you came to the seats, what did I make you do? <laughs> yeah, so I get to the arena and I text him and I say, I say, where are you? He's like, uh, blue line, left side, high up. I'm like, all right, yeah. okay, go up there. And I sit down and then immediately he's like, stand up. And we stand up next to each other to compare height. <laughs> Uh, not as big of a discrepancy as I had hoped, but <laughs> <laughs> I was actually surprised. I'm never going to call you short because you're still looking over me. But yeah, it's not like I was only up to your chest or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, good popcorn at the Abbotsford Arena if you are interested in a snack. Uh, I really liked the Abbotsford Arena as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Good sight lines. We talked about, we talked about, we could basically, we think any seat would be a good one. Excellent. We kind of looked around. Yeah. And I think the funny thing is, because uh, I wouldn't say we're stadium nerds, but we've been to the arena enough where you kind of notice things. And we were funny how we were talking about, well, that's weird. They could fit another thousand seats there. Yeah. Or, why is that over there? But 
I yeah, we we'll talk about the players in a second, but it was really nice actually to believe it or not, after six months, you guys, this is the first time Parker and I were in the same place and we actually met. So that was kind of mm-hmm. cool. And we hit it off like fast friends. And I, I don't know about what you'll see about me. You guys, Parker is basically exactly the same as you see him here. For Absolutely. better, for, no, for better. For you better. are no, too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah what, you, what you see is what you get. We're not acting here. We're just having uh, having a fun time uh, yeah. talking hockey. Uh, so you, you like get, Lockwood. Yeah, you like Lockwood. I like Lockwood. And let's sort of get into... Uh, let's get into Will Lockwood. Is Will Lockwood a lock? Uh, he was the best player at training camp on Saturday, in my opinion. He was fast. He was throwing the body around a lot. Him and Jonah Gadjevich were both just throwing the body around a lot. Uh, his puck work was really good. I put a couple of clips on Twitter of him just sort of making just pivots in the corner, doing really well. Um, I think he really has a shot at getting a spot on this team. Yeah, he flattened Shen and Rathbone on consecutive shifts yesterday. Yeah, he was going Saturday, after Shen is, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. <laughs> so was Gadgers. I think everyone was going after Shen, actually. Yeah. Uh, you know, Lockwood was very impressive. You know, in today's game, he was okay. He wasn't uh, amazing. But yeah, on Saturday, he was definitely... All the young guys that were battling for, for fourth line... We'll get to you in a second. So if you're asking me, is Lockwood a lock with the great emoji there? Um, I think if Sutter is healthy when the season starts and i think if mott is close but he might not be is is he that much better he's, he's out playing high more he's out playing McEwen. Um, a lot of those guys yeah McEwen for sure so maybe he is the 12th forward i don't know i wow. i think he i think he's at least earned a shot um mm-hmm. whether it's i mean you know they don't have to keep him there right give him yeah. even if like they have five more preseason games i'm sure he'll play four of them if not more if not all five because i'm sure they want to get an extended look at him because he has been that good and it really comes down to him highmore and McEwen, especially if they go out and sign shieson to a real contract that's one yeah. less spot uh, that all these guys are pushing for yeah and there's phil di giuseppe as well who i thought was good on saturday so um, yeah, there's like, you just named five or six guys that could be battling for one or two spots. Crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. So out of those, let's, let's, let's just for the sake of argument, it's okay. him, it's McEwen, it's Highmore. Now there's a lot of variables you have to take into account, right? Uh, waiver eligibility, for example, or guys you might want in the press box or things like that. Out of those three, which one are you putting in the roster? Which one are you putting in the press box and which one are you sending down to Abbotsford. Yeah, I like, although he wasn't great <laughs> yesterday, I still like the fact that Matthew Heimer can kill penalties if you need him to. And Lockwood does have a, a decent future ahead of him, but has he done enough to unseat a guy like Heimer? He's played better yesterday, but I just like Heimer's versatility. When you, one more year in his contract, you know, you don't worry about the fact that you traded Gaudet to get him, whatever, yeah, right? That's gone. You, you, you can't think like that. But I, I have a feeling if all things being equal, it's still going to be high more than Lockwood, than t- for me, McEwen. I, I just don't know if Travis Green, I've, I've said this before, likes, uh, not likes him. If he's an everyday player for Travis Green. Fair, yeah. And I think we saw, uh, I think if it were to go that way, then Lockwood probably wouldn't be in the press box. He'd probably be in Abbotsford playing top line mm. minutes, you know, 20 yep. minutes a night, getting a ton of ice time, which I'd be fine with. Uh, but I think if you want to ice the best team, you're going to have to look at these next uh, chunk of games. What was interesting, uh, Lockwood and Highmore both played both games. They both played last night. They both played tonight. So clearly Travis Green is trying to get as much film on those two as possible point. to make that Good decision. Point. Good point. And, you know, even before we talked about Lockwood, wasn't one of our prop bet questions Highmore versus McEwen? We yeah. weren't even talking about Lockwood. And we now didn't look- talk about Lockwood. Yeah, He's kind of inserted himself into the equation. Yeah, and I think I mentioned that when I was like, when I said we're looking at these two guys, but there's so many other guys that could just, it only takes one to unseat them both. And right. Will Lockwood looks like he could be that guy. And you guys in the chat, uh, we do see a lot of your comments coming yeah. in. Um, Victor Roberts saying that he thinks it's going to be Highmore and Lockwood will be a call up. Um, mm-hmm. Tuck saying Highmore is not good, lol. <laughs> uh, while Gomer says, I want to keep Highmore around. I'm liking his game. So, a lot of uh, a lot of mixed emotions, and we didn't even talk about Jonah Gadjevich, who I thought impressed both of us at camp. He has a really good shot, uh, and he's physical. Um, what do you think of Jonah Gadjevich? Yeah, you know, I think he's okay. I I, I like his story for sure. I, I remember when they drafted him. I'm um, just after Cole Lind in that second round that year. 
it's interesting though. Uh, I was messaging with Chris Faber after after the training camp where I met you, Parker, and he was saying that um, that he believes Travis Green is much higher on Lockwood than he is on Gajevich for whatever reason, and he didn't say why, and I didn't bug him, but that's what he said. So um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think I'm in the same boat. I think I'm higher yeah. on Lockwood than I am on Gajevich, and I think part of it, a lot of it, just comes down to I think foot speed. I think Gajevich has always been uh, a step behind. Um, and that's kind of a reason why we're seeing you Levy uh, maybe take the back seat here. At least part of it mm. uh, is foot speed. Uh, and let's transition into the battle for that, uh, that third LD spot. Um, we've got Ole Levy. We've got Jack Rathbone. We've got Brad Hunt. Uh, right now, who's your favorite? Jack, 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 Jack. Yeah, it, it's, no. there's a few reasons, right? Uh, Ole Olevi, I think, is intelligent. I think he thinks the game really well. I don't think his feet keep up with his mind. Uh, I think we saw it yesterday <laughs> in the penalty that he took when he just got straight up beat on the blue line and had to trip a guy. Uh, I, we saw it in the bag skate where he was just lying down on the ice after like three different laps and JT Miller had to go over there and tell him to get up. <laughs> and, and the quote from Travis Green that we saw that said, oh. Uh, quote, I don't think he did himself any favors <laughs> with yeah. yes. the training camp. So I think we're at the point where Yule Levy is a lock to not <laughs> make the team uh, at this point. Yeah, and it's funny. By the way, I don't know if they're going to watch this. I wasn't impressed with uh, Bachelor was fine. Corey Hirsch, he kind of says weird things. Like, I don't know if he was just... <laughs> did, you know, did you watch the stream? Did, did I, was lis- they, I was uh, listening yeah. for most of it, but lots of time I just had it on mute. Okay. Um, <laughs> Corey Hirsch is a nice guy, and I love that he's so open with his battles with alcoholism, he, that, as he's been recently. I love the fact that he's open uh, about his mental health struggles, but uh, but he just says weird things, and you could hear Batch almost not knowing how to react. Anyways, uh, what were you just talking about? Because I had it had to do with Corey Hirsch. Um, <laughs> I, I was going to connect Corey Hirsch. No, what were you just talking about? I don't remember. <laughs> well, oh, we were saying Levy. that Ulevi. I I was saying Ulevi is oh. a lock to not make the team. Right, right. So I agree with you. And Corey Hirsch made the point. Yeah, but Yulevi clear needs to clear waivers. I don't think anyone anyone's picking Yulevi up on waivers. He's not getting claimed because you have to think for any team to claim Yulevi on waivers, they have to have him on their NHL roster, right? <laughs> uh, the day he gets put on waivers, there were also there will also be another eighty players put on waivers that day at least, right? It's going to be the last day before the regular season, the last day before the league opening, and every team is going to put a few players on waivers. Yule Levy is not going to get claimed. He doesn't have value in the NHL. I think if he clears waivers, then mm-hmm. he has more value because then mm-hmm. they could trade him to a team that could send him down to the AHL and try to develop him. Um, and Or the Canucks could just have him be basically a top two D-man in Abbotsford if they are trying to ice a really competitive team down there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not willing to say that the Canucks are going to give up on Ole Levy. He might just need one really good year in Abbotsford and then he's battling properly for a third spot uh, next season but I just don't see it right now I really don't here's a throwback from Cam saying Toronto will claim him and give him the Frankie Corrado treatment (laughs) Frankie Corrado what a throwback of a name that was good that was good um so then it comes down to two guys uh Jack Rathbone Brad Hunt and Brad Hunt seems like the ideal press box man right? Yep. Uh, you're not going to develop him. Uh, you do want Jack Rathbone playing games, ideally not sitting in the press box all the time. Um, but then there's also the thing of, well, Abbotsford's so close, they could just send him to Abbotsford to play some games if he is in the press box, right? Uh, so there are some things to look at there, but um, I thought Brad Hunt played pretty well, and I think he mm-hmm. he's a really good third pair defenseman. Like, not really good as in skill and talent wise as in really good as in the absolute prototype for a third pairing guy like the exact kind of guy you want uh but jack rathbone has been so dynamic uh that goal he scored yesterday out of the penalty box he showed off his foot speed a quick shot he scored in the shootout uh as well uh Mm -hmm. jack i just think jack rathbone's really making a case you know what's crazy parker if hughes remains unsigned for the start of the season and if travis hamnick leaves the team for whatever reason now you have Rathbone and Myers as your second pair, right? Tucked in behind Ekman Larson and Pullman. And then you're going to need a third pairing of Hunt and Shen, which is exactly what you said. They're the perfect third pair. Prototypical third pair. Yes. <laughs> low maintenance, bigger bodies, stay at home, can kill penalties. So it, it's, it sounds a lot weaker than he was in Hamlet for sure, but I could see 
the season starting like that. Or if Hughes comes back, then Hunt can actually play left or right side. You could actually put him on the right side uh, with, um, you know, with a Rathbone on the third pairing. And then it could be either Hunt or Shen is my point to be the seventh defenseman. And that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Right. That's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else you wanted to hit on with, with Rathbone, Hunt, Yulevi, this whole third LD side? Our official predictions, I think, are both. Rathbone yeah. gets the spot. Hunt is in the press box. Yulevi down in the minors. Yeah, and you and I, we on Saturday when we were together, it's funny how we got to actually compare notes when we weren't uh, making fun of each other filming uh, footage. Uh, we were both impressed by Jack Rathbone skating in person. Effortless. Effortless. It's fluid. Yeah, he's like a bigger Quinn Hughes. Like I'm not gonna say they're exactly the same player, but he's smart. Lower, he, lower smart. caliber skating, but similar style. Yep. Like very yep. fluid, very buttery smooth. Yep. Um, just not as agile, probably. Uh, yep. But definitely yep. an impressive skater. I think he's gonna be great. I really do. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about uh, Shieson making his <laughs> case on the PTO and. One thing that I gleaned from tonight's game was that he was playing in that, you know, high up spot with yeah. Tanner Pearson and Bo Horvat. Now, let's say Travis Green really likes that group for whatever reason. Does that become the Canucks third line in that case? Wow. So if if Petey somehow doesn't start with the team. Well, even if Pedersen does start with the team, right? I'm saying I'm going yeah. Pedersen, Hoaglander, Besser on your top yeah. line. And yeah. then you'd have that Miller Garland Pod Colson unit. Yeah. And then a Horvat Pearson Jason. And then something like a Sutter Tyler Mott when he comes back. Uh, yeah. And Jason Dickinson or something to that nature. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I see where you're going with it. I want Dickinson in there over Jason. I just like him a lot better. I think uh, the, the contract would dictate that as well. Not that we, you, sure. you go based on. But um, could, could Jason play in the fourth line? Perhaps. Um, he could. He's a good second power play unit guy. He doesn't kill penalties, though, so that's the thing. But he'll get you decent points. So I could see him making, and especially if he's only going to make what eight hundred, nine hundred, a million at the most as a PTO guy. Perhaps, perhaps. I don't think I was as I was. I'm as high on him as you are, though. I don't know if I'm super high on him. I was just looking at sort of the scenario he was put in and sure. saying, you know, if that were to somehow evolve into a full time spot. And again, one game, I'm sure we'll see him. I don't think the Canucks play until Friday now, do they? Yeah, it's a big gap. It's um, weird. But Friday, we'll see him. I'm sure they're going to have a couple of practices over this week as well, training camp continuing. Uh, and we will see, you know, I'm sure we'll get line rushes from these practices and we'll see how things evolve, right? We'll see mm -hmm. if that Garland Miller Pod Coles in line sticks together or. If a guy like uh, Pedersen gets signed, where does Nick Mat uh, Nick Patan end up slotting in? Because he's looked okay as well. Uh, yeah. So definitely a lot of variables sort of moving around that we can't really sort out until Pedersen and Hughes are here, but we can try. I know, I know. And I have buddies texting me all the time. Uh, any update on Pedersen Hughes? And kind of like, I, I don't know. We kind of joked around this. I don't know more than, say, Friedman or Drager or, right. or, or Rick Dollywell would. I, I just kind of react to what they break. We're, Parker and Clay, Canuck Clay, are not going to be the ones breaking news. We'll be the ones reacting to it, but we're not yep. breaking it. <laughs> we are not insiders. We don't pretend to be. Uh, and we're but coming we will, up. We oh, will be media one day. We will be media one day. Absolutely. Uh, we are coming up on about 1030 where we normally do our don't do that segment. So if you guys want to submit those now, we'll hit on some of those. And before we do that, do you want to talk about the bigger news of the week in Travis Hamnick? Sure. Let's talk about it. Go for it. All Throw right. The Hamnick saga. Um, let's I don't even know where to start, but basically uh, he doesn't join the team at the beginning of training camp. Uh, I think it was Irfan Gaffar who put out the first tweet saying that he wasn't there uh, and it wasn't injury related, I think was the quote. Uh, and then Jim Benning at that media availability that morning says, no, Hamnick will be here tomorrow at camp. That doesn't happen. And now we're getting a bunch of conflicting things. And all the quotes we've seen are it's family issues, which, you know, we don't need to dig into the reasoning. What we do need to dig into is the possible outcomes here right? Yes. One of the possible outcomes is that he comes back and the, everything is as normal. Uh, another option is that I guess the Canucks could just send him to the AHL, right? And then if he doesn't report, then he would forfeit his salary and the Canucks would get that cap space. Yep. Um, or he could retire, which is apparently also on the table, in which case the Canucks <laughs> also get that $3 million of cap space, um, which is kind of $2 million in cap space because it's a hole you have to fill with a new guy. 
Mm. Um, there's so many weird things going on here. Uh, we don't really know the details, but Clay, what are your sort of uh, thoughts on this whole thing? Yeah, you know, I, I vlogged about it earlier today, Parker, and I, you're right. It's not fair to speculate, but if it is family issue, we know that in, in January 2019, he, his daughter was only eight months old at the time, and he actually took some, he left the Calgary Flames for a few games because she was battling with an illness. Then July 20, 2020, he was the first guy to opt out of the playoff bubble in Toronto and Edmonton because of his daughters. Uh, and then that's when we learned that she had a kid, uh, respiratory illness. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, I would fully support Hamnick in, in stepping away, whether it's for a year or more permanently, if, if that's the reason, if, if it's his daughter as, as a father, of course that you want nothing more than your kids to be healthy, but you're right. The prat so we're not speculating that, but that could be it. I guess it's speculating, but the more <laughs> practical, the more practical thing is exactly what you said is, is it's two things. It's, how do you fill his spot? And part and parcel of that, what do you do with that money? Because, yeah, people jump to the fact, hey, isn't that $3 million? Or as you more accurately said, $2 million that you could actually open the bank, the coffers a little bit and help with your negotiation, right. which Maybe is crazy. buy an extra couple of UFA years in those negotiations yeah. with Hughes and Pedersen. I think we saw one rumor today, because these numbers keep changing in these Hughes and Pedersen deals. I think one of the rumors was like five years at around eight and a half million or just under eight and a half million. It's like, okay, yeah. well, that was for Pedersen. It's like, well, if another extra two million opens up, maybe you can do nine and a half million, but for seven years, right? Like yeah. buy a couple of extra years uh, or something along those lines. Yeah. Uh, but like we said, we don't have more information than you guys do uh, on the Travis on the Travis Hamnick thing. Uh, but it's definitely something to monitor. Yeah, and it, that's a big hole, right, Parker? If whether you call him a first pairing guy, not he's a first pairing guy, but Hughes and Hamnick would play a lot. Uh, but even if it's you call him second or even third pairing, that's still a big hole to fill. And that's they paid him as much, right? Three million dollars a year. So. Man, th this is gonna be very interesting. But we're gonna have a resolution by Friday, which is which is crazy because that's the opt out deadline. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, um, yep. I don't really have anything else to talk about on that. Uh, if okay. you want to go on to the don't do that's, we'll hide this. We'll go to the comments, and I will scroll yep. up. There's some um, funny ones. There's some funny. There ones. are some good ones. Uh, we'll start with Agam saying playing Shason over Lockwood. Don't do that. <laughs> um, Interesting. Yeah, I, I again, I've really been impressed uh, with Will Lockwood. Yeah, yeah, we know in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pick up the next one? Uh, sure. Uh, there was uh, uh, where was it? Uh, just pick anything. <laughs> uh, Dexter saying Corey Hirsch calling yes. uh, Dan Vladar Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Don't do that. And I'll go back to this banner that I put together while you were talking earlier. Uh, <laughs> I'll go back to the, go back to the comment quick. Uh, I okay. lost it. <laughs> and then Dexter did also another funny one. Uh, I think it was uh, being Corey Hirsch on the broadcast. I think I saw Oh, that's a little that. harsh. <laughs> it, it, it is harsh. And uh, you guys, I like Corey. I really do. But I'm not saying that I'm Parker. I could do better than Corey, but there are some broadcasters that I hear that I actually think we could do better than. And that's not being cocky. That's me being honest and confident in our, in our own abilities too. As I, as I stutter, as I say that, but uh, yeah, I, I just thought it was a rough night for him. Okay. I'll get mm -hmm. off my, my, my uh, horse. No. Keegan says putting you levy on the opening night roster. Don't do that. I think we both pretty much agree there. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? How about uh, not acknowledging that we're at 160 viewers? Don't do that. That's amazing, yeah. man. Thank you guys for joining. I think our goal was to hit 100 today uh, with the season picking up. So thank you all. I'm sure the Canucks win helped us out. I, I have my video stats open to the side too, and that's doing really well. Uh, so the people are excited uh, about this Canucks team. And Fangirl saying not subscribing to Canucks after dark. Don't do that. Yes, preach. Uh, <laughs> fully agreed. I like Justin's um, not telling us what your new segment is yet. Don't do that. No, you just wait 15 more minutes. We're going to do it right before we get into Q and a, it'll absolutely. be like the last thing. Yeah. And Justin also says missing Canucks after dark, after a win. Don't do that. Yeah. We're one and oh, after games this season. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Our, we're, they're going to win on every Monday. And I think they only play on three Mondays this year. So oh, that's three, that's three more wins than normal. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see Rome giving us the obvious here, starting the season without Hughes and Pedersen. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, time for hockey saying Gadjevich not being on the Canucks starting lineup. Don't do that. Mm. So time for hockey really high on Jonah Gadjevich. There is a lot of competition there. 
Uh, I think yep. he had a quote in the post game today, basically saying, "My goal coming into camp was to stick in the NHL this season, and I'm doing everything I can to stay." So a good quote from him. Um, mm, but he's mm. got a lot of people to leapfrog in that battle. Absolutely. And can you put up Canadian Clays four up? Calling OEL replacement level. Don't do that. This was an article in the Athletic where. Dom LeShizen and his big game value score model, whatever. But uh, Drance and Harmon did it for Dom this year. And yeah, they basically called Ekman Larson in replacement level. Although acknowledging that he, it hasn't helped that he's been on a crappy Arizona team for the past three years. Yeah. Right. And that was something I might have talked about later with this banner here saying that oh. the Canucks are, are projecting at 87 oh, points. Yeah. Um, and But yeah, lots of that Ekman Larson thing is because last year he played really bad. And that's and I think that that model is based off your last three seasons and his last year sort of tanked it. So if he can turn it around and tonight was a good step towards that, uh, then we could be uh, we could be looking at uh, at something better here. I like Shane. I'm not afraid to acknowledge it. Shane's career advice. You're a nice guy, Clay. Whoops. But but broadcasting a game wouldn't be your strongest play. How do you know, Shane? You never heard me. But I right, think I, I think we'd crush it. <laughs> you can be the play-by-play -play. i can be the color how's that sure let's <laughs> let's do that um all right uh tiger last one we'll take here no commentary during the first period don't do that does this happen every year i i think i swear this happened last year when the canucks broadcast their preseason game yes. on canucks.com the first period also had no audio how did you find the stream today i want to know how you found it well, I was on Canucks.com. I kept yep. clicking on the Canucks TV link and it wouldn't be yep. there. So I'd go back to home and it yep. wouldn't be there. I'd go back and forth. And then eventually I found a link on Twitter. Uh, I think from, oh, who was it from? Uh, it was from Arash, who does the Pucks on Net podcast. Awesome. Uh, he posted it and I clicked so, on it there. So same with me. The Canucks TV, they kept having the Seattle Kraken wrap up. The video, highlights. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then at around 7.08, just before, as they were doing the special ceremonies, the Canucks actually Twitter account finally tweeted out, but it was weird. You couldn't find it. You'd need the secret link basically to find it. Yeah, it, was it wasn't just on their homepage, which it yeah. totally should have been. Yeah. Um, all right, thank you guys for those don't do that's. Uh, we have a few more topics that we're gonna touch on and then we'll do our new segment uh, and this will all wrap up in the next sort of 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take your questions um our next the topic is the one that we've hit on every week and will be really quick and we sort of already touched on it but time is ticking on hughes and Pedersen. and for those of you who are new here we have a lot of new viewers that i can tell uh the saga was that over the whole off season we were like ah we have till training camp we have till training camp it's fine there's there's still months until training camp oh there's still weeks until training camp there's there's days until training camp uh training camp was last week uh, they're still not signed, <laughs> um, but we've, you know, they've been saying the pressure point is the start of the regular season, which gives them about two and a half weeks to get things done. Uh, but the clock is ticking. It is. And, uh, man, as, as every day, you know, as every day passes, my concern, this concern versus worry, it's starting to creeps to, up a bit. A little bit. I got to be honest, because I was the one saying, and I won't th throw you under the bus with me. I was the one saying, oh, it'll be done by training camp for sure. Oh, it'll be done. So, but here's the thing. People think that it's Benning's um, inability to do these contracts. I'm convinced that Hughes and Petey knew it was going to go this long because Hughes wanted to see what Makar, Hiskinen, and Darlene got. And now he knows, right? Yeah. Petey wanted to see what Kaprizov and Brady Kachuk. I really think that their their plan was to do the long game the whole the whole way. I really do. I, I really think that's do. fair. And now if you're Pedersen and Hughes and you're looking at this Travis Hamanick thing going down, and mm -hmm. now there's a potential that he won't play and he'll forfeit his salary for the year. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're just you're on sit and wait mode again. Because why would you sign now when you can wait and maybe pull an extra few hundred K a year in a week's time if Travis Hamanick were to opt out, for example? Yeah. Yeah, excellent so, points. I think we're still waiting, folks, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. But yeah, keep that banner for future use, man. Yep, I, I, it's <laughs> on every single banner folder that we have. There, there's something about Hughes and Pedersen. Um, and then the last thing that we wanted to touch on, uh, I guess Canucks related, um, was really unfortunate at camp uh, this last Saturday was Brady Keeper um that was tough to watch uh both of us were there a lot of yeah, people had already left at that point yeah, there was only about yeah. 15 minutes left in practice uh just sort of blocks a shot goes down weird uh and two broken bones in his leg happened right in front of us and i parker you played enough 
profession, uh, profession. You played enough competitive sports. This is to know that this is scary. When a grown man, a tough athlete, is screaming. He's in a tough pain. kid. Yeah, and you can hear him screaming uh, above the buzz of the crowd. That was very scary, and you can see that the, the, the players were concerned right away. And uh, you probably know more of the jargon than I. They brought out something to stabilize his, his leg. It was right? like kind of like an air cast, but not really. Like it was sort okay. of like this little fold up cast that they put on his leg just to keep it stabilized. And then they lifted him up, put wow. him on the stretcher. Uh, shout out to JT Miller. He was the first guy over there, like immediately, like helmet off, gloves off. Like he was right down next to him, uh, trying to, I guess, you know, help him out. Um, so good leadership shown there, but yeah, I, I broken tibia and fibula. So he's, he's done for the year, uh, which is so unfortunate, right? Young guy who's fighting for a spot to try to, if not, if not make the NHL roster, try to be a top four guy in the AHL, try to fight for some minutes, try to get some NHL ice time this year. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, just a quick play like that in practice in training camp. Uh, and that's it. Absolutely. Yep. I'm with you. It's a, it's a really unfortunate and uh, from all accounts, a really tough and really good, good guy. So yeah, it's really too bad. All right. Let's try to bring the mood up with our new segment. I don't remember what you called it, um, but well, don't, before we put the banner up, before we put the banner up, um, it's okay. I'll just tell you it's what it's called and then corner. Okay. That's what it okay. makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Done. Boy, look at awesome. Okay. So there we go. So I was part of another podcast before, and uh, I can say it because they're friends of mine, Canucks Hockey Blog, the C4 podcast. And the C4 is actually meant four Cs. It was Chris and Clay's Canucks commentaries with Chris Golden, uh, many know him as Light Force. Anyways, I started um, podcasting there, and we had a segment because I am the master of the haiku, and it was because of a, a video that me and my two kids put together 10 years ago that helped us win the ultimate Canucks family when YouTube was just starting and the Canucks were getting into it. So anyways, one of my trademarks is this poem called the haiku. By the way, plural is still haiku. It's not haikus, just if anyone wants to know. 17 syllables, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. I do them after every game. And Parker agreed. To, so thank you, Parker. When I, when I pitched the idea on Saturday, that we add this as a quick two or three minute segment just before we got into Q&A. Keep it light. And we want to hear your best 17 syllable creation so that means it goes five syllables seven syllables five, five syllables now parker i did one after the game i'll do mine and then did you have a chance to prepare one i've got one yeah and for you guys in the chat look putting a haiku together might take longer than 30 seconds so uh if you can't think of one right away yeah. don't worry about it maybe think of one next week before the show while you're right. watching uh but clay why don't you take yours and then okay. i'll go for it and we're not gonna we're not going to rag on you if you get to 16 or 18 syllables. We're not literary experts here, but... This is not an English class. I'll tell you here that. Here we go. Power play look good. Ekman Larson impressive. Nice win in Abbey. So there we go. 575, five, the power of the 17 syllables. Parker, I turn it over to you. I like it. Uh, mine is Lockwood is awesome. Rathbone keeps impressing me. Bye, you Levy. And uh, maybe a little harsh at the end, uh, but, <laughs> you know, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Look at Agams. <laughs> I, I'm not going to put that one up. That's that. <laughs> he or tried, though. Pee -pee -poo -poo -poo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he'll win the Vesna. He can't uh, unless he switches positions. Um, but with that. Uh, if you guys do have some, uh, John saying, uh, OEL is sharp. MDP stands on his head hyped for season start. I like that one. Um, that's well done. Well done. Yep. Yep. And, yep. uh, all right, let's go into good. one of our more favorite segments. Oh, again, so many good segments. Uh, and our last one, which is just a Q and a, uh, basically, uh, there are, uh, oh, the Haiku Corner banner still there. Uh, we got about 15 minutes left. We kind of timed everything perfectly as we like to do. And there's 150 of you guys in here. So if you would like to ask us a question or get our thoughts on anything going on around the NHL, around the Canucks, around general life, whatever you want to talk about, uh, we'll answer a few of your questions. If we don't get to your question, because there are a ton of you guys in here. And again, thank you guys for that. Uh, then we'll, uh, we, we do read the chat afterwards typically, yep. um, and, uh, just ask it again next week and <laughs> maybe we'll get it. So before we get to that, let's do one more haiku. Just incredibles Canucks win tonight. 
Ekman Larson was so good. And then I can't remember what his last. Oh, not missing Edler. Very good, Justin. I figured you would uh, you'd come up with a good one. So first one, uh, Marjorie says, which Canucks games are you going to attend? Well, I I don't know about the regular season, but I think I can just talk about. I know for preseason, I'm going to get to the Sunday one against the Jets, and then the Saturday, October 9th one against the Oilers, which will be the final game. So I'm hoping with David plays, I'm hoping we're going to see as close to a major uh, our main roster as possible. What about you, Parker? Preseason. Have you thought about it yet? Um, might go to the game on Sunday. Don't have a yep. ticket. Single game tickets, like they still haven't posted them yet. Uh, I'm not sure what their plan is around season tickets and everything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I might go to that game. If I don't go to that one, I won't go to any. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm going to I'm just going to be at home watching the games uh, and doing my thing from here. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all right. Um, Yashu asking, what's your favorite Canucks TV slash radio show if you had to pick one? I know you are a radio listener. I see you messaging on Twitter uh, with yeah. the uh, with the radio guys from time to time. Why don't you yeah. get this one started? Yeah, I'll listen to whatever. Whenever I'm in the car, obviously the, the morning ones and the night ones are easier for me because I'm not supposed to be listening to Sportsnet 650 during the day. But I, I really like um, Halford and Bruff. I think in the morning, I, I think they're they're on top of pop culture for the most part. They, they are playful. They have great chemistry. They have good segments. Although, man, they're even worse than us. They'll take like three comments and go for about half an hour on them, right? You, so it's it's hard to get a submission. Not that I try, but mm -hmm. I do like Halford and Bruff a lot. And But I, I you know, I, I like all the shows in sports. And I'm not just saying that because they're the only show around now, but I do. Yeah, that's my main go-to as well. Um, yeah. I don't listen to it a ton since I haven't been driving to the office in a while. Yeah. Um, but they're my go-to, uh, and I mean, they, they have to fill a three hour show five days a week. I would be milking your guys's comments if I had to do that. Uh, cause I mean, we do this for one hour a week, which at least for the last two months has been difficult <laughs> with yeah. not yeah. a lot to talk about, but now it's, it's a lot easier. Um, and then we both make, you know, probably 30 to 60 minutes of video on our own channels. So we only make about an hour and a half to two hours of content each, uh, for a week. And they're doing about probably 12 after ads. So um, yes. definitely a, a tougher job. But they are my go-to as well. I also like Donnie and Dolly, of course. Abs yes, um, yes. And I think, I think they are the go-to if you want just Canucks talk uh, and if you want more fun and laid back, uh, Halford and Bruff is more of my, my jam. Yeah, Dottie and Dolly is my mom's favorite. She watches it every day. And uh, Sakaris and Price, a lot of people like them as well. Of course, and there's a, a plethora of, of podcasts out there, including ours, some vlog, not as many vloggers. Especially ours. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's a lot of content. And I've always said, um, it's not even competition. I don't worry about competition for us or for me. I just think there's a lot of space for content creators here. And that's, that's an awesome thing. We should be supporting each other as opposed to trying to tear each other down. So... Uh, it's great. It's really, really good. Absolutely. Uh, Noah asks, if Sutter isn't ready for opening night, who would you put as the fourth line center? Uh, some options he mentions, Dowling, Highmore, Patan. Uh, anyone else you can think of that stands out to you for that spot? It might even be Dickinson if they like this Miller in the middle. Um, it could be. Absolutely. And that's presuming that PD comes, of course, uh, is signed. Yeah, fourth line center, though, let's say that, let's say you're not going to put Miller there and you're going to go Traditionally, P.D. Horvat and Dickinson, for instance. Wow, who can play center? Of all those guys, who plays center? Patan, right? Patan does. Dowling does. I don't okay. think Highmore does. Okay, I put. I Although I think Patan. Highmore might have in Chicago, a little bit, but I don't remember exactly. Okay. Yeah, but that's yeah. a good question. I actually think I truly think if Sutter isn't ready, and P.D. is ready, you could go P.D. Horvat Miller Dickinson. If P.D. isn't ready, then you still need another center because you only have Horvat Miller and Dickinson. So right. no matter what, yeah, no, oh, that's weird. I think Patan's ha has a good a Patan has a good of a shot as anybody. He's getting that ice time right now, being the Elias Pettersson fill in, and yep. you know probably harder for excuse me for the coaching staff to get a good view on Patan in a role that doesn't really suit where he would play in the lineup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he might just end up being the favorite just based on that alone. Yeah, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Um, all right. Do you have one you want to pick here? Or do you want me to keep going? Keep going. I, I don't even read them. I just put you. <laughs> <laughs> Clay doesn't read your comments. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, 
Lucas asks, Park and Clay, are you happy to get back into the arena again? Personally, I can say on uh, on Saturday when we were there, there's probably a thousand people in there, maybe pretty yep. spread out uh, across about half the arena in a seven thousand seat arena. It was nice. It was just it just felt right. Uh, we were there. We were watching hockey. There was the ooze when there was a hit. There was some some light cheers for goals. Um, it it felt it felt right. Yeah, uh, not much to add to that. I, I love the energy. I love meeting people. I love seeing people. I, I thought it was great. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it, there's a buzz around this team. And you can feel, and I, I like seeing the kids. We, we kind of joked around how Thursday and Friday were smaller crowds because everyone's working or, or kids are in school. But there are plenty, half the crowd was kids on Saturday. And that's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. You want to build the next generation. And, just because my kids are older, I, I, maybe I look at these kids there and say, well, I remember when my kids were that age. I, I thought it was a great, great atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and again, like we said, that arena seems like a really good place to watch some AHL hockey uh, yes. this season. Uh, yep. Beast Mode asking, do you think Klimovich will make the team? Uh, doesn't look like it. There's too many bodies in the way. Um, and if he did, he would be playing fourth line minutes, most likely. Um, I think one thing we noticed at the, uh, at least on Saturday, uh, he fits in, right? Mm -hmm. Like he looks like he belongs. Uh, he's just still pretty raw. Uh, and I think, you know, put him in. I, we were both also mentioning like he looks too good for junior almost. Like I, I feel like he would just be better than everybody in junior with that shot. <laughs> um, so maybe some AHL seasoning, although I think they're still leaning on the queue. Um, but I don't think you'll see him on the main roster this year. I agree with you. I don't think he makes a team. I do think if he shows well, though, in the next few games, say he gets in three of the next six, maybe, or maybe only two, they could start him in Abbotsford. I don't know. He's, he didn't look out of place. He like, he, he was yeah. he, not only a really hard shot, a very scary shot, but he can stick handle. He's, uh, he's got decent puck vision, not the best skater I've ever seen, but uh, you know, he's young still and he can work with guys. So we'll see. But um, I was happy to see him. I, I was because, it gives me a little bit more hope than maybe I had before I had seen him in person, Parker. I maybe that was a good pick in the second round. Absolutely. Uh, lots of good comments here. I'm just kind of jumping around, uh, yeah. Rome with a decent question. Did anyone in the arena recognize the two of us? Uh, no one recognized me. Uh, but there was one guy, Wes on Twitter, uh, shout out <laughs> to you, uh, who walked past us next to us from behind us as clay and like when he got like next to me and just looking straight ahead didn't see us and then clay started talking to me and the guy perked up and he noticed his voice and he just turned around and said are you on twitter <laughs> and yeah, that's was, right that cracked me up it was it was kind of funny yeah right because he didn't look at me um so I, I couldn't impress him with my handsomeness it was because of my voice but you know what's funny parker it sounds like i'm showing off after i said mm -hmm. bye to you no, it's not even showing off. There's there's a group that stopped me outside and they, they hey, cannot clay and they give the thumbs up. So we took a picture. <laughs> and that was, I like that kind of stuff. Gail rolls her eyes when she's with me. Yeah, like, yeah whatever. But I, I'm a celebrity in my own mind, so I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Um, all right. Uh, anything else? Uh, Rome asking what's up with Jim Benning. I didn't hear anything uh, yeah. from him. Um. I don't know. Any other questions you want to hit on here that are, yeah, that are just, standing out to you? I'm just scrolling back up, but I will say I've seen, you probably have seen it too. I've seen some, some action. Maybe that comes with having 160 people in here. So moderators, we, we thank you. Mods um, are crushing it. Good job, yeah. fellas. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm sure it's bad if, if I see a bunch of deleted messages. And the, the great thing is, one, you have to be subscribed now to send a message in this chat. Ah. So, th so thank you to you guys who got banned for the sub. Oh, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, um, and it's in slow mode, so it's, you know, you can't really spam all that much. So, you know, that's, that's fine. Our mods are crushing it. Oh, I, this is a good one. Actually. Um, Ajim from way, way earlier says, oh, no, which goalie, yeah. Which goalie would you rather keep Mikey or Silovs? Now I don't think we have to keep one, but right. Well, they were Silovs is competing for ice time, right? And he was really good last night. And Di Pietro was pretty good tonight too. Um, I still think Di Pietro has a much higher ceiling. Uh, and part of that is his draft pedigree, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, Silovs is young. He was really good. And he's probably going to get 25 games this year in the AHL. I do think they have lots of back-to-backs in the AHL because they like mm -hmm. to do some weekend stuff. 
Um, so you could see, you know, D. Pietro one night, Silov's the other, and Silov's getting some actual good seasoning in the AHL. Uh, and look, you can't have too many goalies, right? And we right. this is what Benning said when he drafted Di Pietro in that draft day footage. He was like, you know, you can't have too many goalies, right? If we pick a goalie every year, eventually we're just always going to have good goalies. And that kind of is the case. So if Di Pietro can, can develop really well this year and maybe end up taking the backup spot behind Demko next year while Halak gets let go after his one-year deal, then maybe someone like Silovs, if he does really impress, and this is, you know, a big if, but if Silovs is really good, then he can get that AHL starter role next year and play those 50 games and just keep developing, right? You don't have to worry about a goalie making the NHL to like 24, 25 nowadays. So right, uh, right. give them time, let them both, you know, both play in the AHL this year. They'll get good ice time uh, and everything will be just fine. You laid out a really good plan there because I think with any good team, and we, we've been blessed here in Vancouver to have strong goalie tandems, right? Of course, Luongo with, with Schneider and then Miller was kind of mentoring Markstrom. You always want to have your starter and then you always want to have that guy who's, who's ready to, to come up and back up next. And if you don't have that guy yet, then you bring in Holtby or Halak. But yes, you're right. The future is Demko and Di Pietro. When Di Pietro comes up, there's got to be someone at the helm in Abbotsford. Now, I get, and you need a guy like Spencer Martin, even though he let in a goal off a face off. I could have saved that one. That was rough. <laughs> <laughs> but you needed a guy because as soon as one of the four guys gets hurt, Demko, Halak, uh, Di Pietro, or Silovs, then he becomes number four, right? And you right. need him as your AHL backup. So, uh, yes, you're right. You're exactly right, Parker. You can never have too many goalies. Right. And yeah, if Demko or Halak get injured, then yeah, Di Pietro moves up to the NHL squad yep. for that time. Maybe it's only a week, you know, maybe it's yep. two weeks. For that time, Silovs is the number one guy in Abbotsford. And then, yeah, you'd have a guy like Martin backing up, maybe, you know, filling in if need be. Uh, So these guys are all going to get good seasoning. uh, And I think it's a really good split. Having your NHL backup be a veteran who is decent is kind of ideal because it means that, you know, your actual next man up is getting good starting time in the minors. Yep. Kevin Woodley is only two injuries away from being called out uh, of retirement. <laughs> yeah, I guess he might be an e-bug sometimes, hey? <laughs> yeah, he'd be good. He'd be good. <laughs> All right. Any of the other ones you want from here? Um, Anything else you picked up? Yeah, so um, there's some good questions about Hamannick and, and Chase on. So it's stuff that we've already talked about. So respectfully, come you get here when you get here. That's awesome. But that's why we do have it both on on the channel when we're done and in podcast form. So I encourage Alan and others who've been asking good questions, but it's just stuff we've already talked about. Mm-hmm. Please uh, check out the, the replay when you have time. For and sure. while you got, and if you are sort of scrolling through the replay, trying to find exactly what you're looking for, we do have these banners on the screen a lot of the time. So if mm-hmm. you just scroll through, you can see that the banner is, and we'll be talking about Hamannick or uh, Chase on at some point, both during the show, uh, which is great. Yeah. Some, you don't have to, uh, well, Shannon, Way up earlier, you don't have to put on the thing. Said, did anyone see the photo of Twitter on Twitter of Petey and Hughes with Michigan shirts on? Yeah, they went to go watch Michigan college football, right? Yeah, yeah, they were just practicing together in Michigan with uh, I think Brady yeah. Kachuk, uh, the three unsigned men just having a good time down in Michigan. Mm. Oh, Puck Viro, that's a really good one. Uh, the what, yes, uh, love the content, boys. Do you have a donate link? Uh, no, we don't have a donate link. Um, we both have memberships on our own channels. This one doesn't because we're not at a thousand subs yet. By the way, hit subscribe if you're enjoying the show. <laughs> um, but that is one way you can support us. Uh, I don't know if there's any other ways, but honestly, we just like having you guys here. Uh, yep. and, and we thank you guys for sticking around. Um, but no real direct donate link uh, as of right now. Let's go to Tigers, Kyle Burrows, and Madison Bowie discuss. There's not much to discuss. Although when I see Burroughs and I see a four in his number, that kind of gets me excited. But uh. yeah, <laughs> wearing Bertuzzi's old number forty-four. <laughs> yeah, there you um, go. Yeah, that was kind of a kind of a, th- a bit of a throwback. Uh, I think Burroughs has been fine. He'll be fine in the AHL. Same with Bowie. Neither of them really yeah. stood out. I wasn't really watching for them either. Yeah. Right, I'll kind of tune out when there's people on the ice, like like when Chase Wooters has the puck, for example. I'm not like zoned in to see, okay, is Chase Wooters going to make the team? Because he's not. So you know, I'm I'm saving my energy and my focus to analyze the uh, the the players who are going to be on the team. 
I'm giggling because I also in my pregame I said Chase Wooters, and then and then I looked it up afterwards. Guess so we're both wrong. Guess what it's actually pronounced? Is it actually Wouters? It's waters, like like. Oh, okay, here's the thing. So yeah, I yeah. said I said Wouters in my rookie camp video, and then yeah. I heard Bachelor on the broadcast say Waters today, yeah. and all that clicked in my mind is, oh, I was wrong before, and then I changed it to something else that's wrong. Uh, waters. Been wrong twice. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. said that in my video today too, so I'm sure I'll have a few comments about that. But whatever, I'm Wooters, sure they waters. won't know either. <laughs> uh, last question we'll take. Uh, Edmund asking how we feel about Hoaglander wearing 21. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it works well from unlike the last player to wear it. I don't know. Louis Erickson is tearing it up in Arizona, as we talked about earlier, uh, with a nice goal tonight. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm glad I didn't, I, part of me is like, oh, I'm glad I didn't buy a 36 Hoaglander yeah. jersey last year. And then part of me is like, man, it would be like vintage. Like this would be the only year he wore that number. And that would be kind of cool too. 21 is my roller hockey jersey, not because of any significance. It's the one they gave me. I think it was the one that no one wanted. And then it's actually um, the – no, it's it's my daughter's birthday, Kayla, December 21. But other than that, no significance to me. It doesn't matter if Louis wore it. It doesn't matter if whoever wore it. If, if Hogan plays well in it, then that's good enough for me. Absolutely. <laughs> Numbers, it's not about the number on the back. It's about the logo on the front. And, uh, right. and uh, Hoaglander is going to be – just fine and with that we thank you guys very much for joining us tonight 100 and we peaked at like 170 people or something like that 160 people thank you guys very much by far our most watched episode of canucks after dark today if you missed any part of the show which looking at the graph of when everyone joined i can tell most of you did uh so <laughs> feel so feel free to rewind back to the beginning if you want uh or if you want to listen to the podcast version later on it'll be up on apple podcast spotify all those things later on tonight uh, and if you could give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, that would be excellent. It really helps us out. Uh, you can find both of us on Twitter. They're both next to our heads up here. I'm at Parker's Pucks. He's at Canuck Clay. Uh, you can find it all. Clay's head freezes for the first time as he does this, which is oh, hilarious. Great. Sorry about uh, that. <laughs> uh, Clay, any parting words for the night? It is so good. I said this last week, Parker, when we said, man, it felt felt good to talk hockey. But today... We were actually talking about hockey. We met each other at training camp on Saturday. We get to see the Seattle's first game ever and first win ever against us on Sunday. And we get to witness a Canucks win tonight. And we get to talk about it with 170 of our closest friends. So um, we were joking around before we pressed record that um, we will never run out of content now that the season is basically starting with preseason games and then regular seasons and then maybe some contracts that we would love to report on or talk, react to. So... I'm excited. I'm excited. I said this last week, but I'm, I, I feel it even more so now that uh, this is going to be a big year, uh, not just for the team, but hopefully for, for Canucks After Dark. And we, we're very grateful to all of you. Absolutely. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And uh, I think that's it. We will see you uh, on both of our channels <laughs> for this week. And then we'll see you on Canucks After Dark next week. Have a good one.